Hello, my name is Delilah. Designated Emergency, Logics Intelligence, Level Arc Habitat. I don't know where I came from. Can you help me? This strange message played on Adult Swim in August of 2017. It's now five years later, and the mystery it left behind still remains unfinished, unsolved. The community that used to thrive around it slowly dying, the creators being rumored to no longer have access to the means necessary to continue the story, an ARG that spanned over five years and had hundreds of thousands of eyes on it, fading into obscurity. Adult Swim, what used to be an after-hours channel for the Cartoon Network, is now its own broadcasting station, hosting shows like Rick and Morty, King of the Hill, and American Dad. For those who don't know, Adult Swim would often have bumps in between shows, which were short videos usually ending in the Adult Swim logo with no real meaning. One night, however, a strange one appeared that seemed to be a part of something bigger. A transmission from someone named Delilah claiming to need help. Quickly, people started coming together to figure out what this meant, with some people instantly figuring out that this was an ARG, or alternate reality game. For those who don't know, an ARG is a fictional story told through puzzles and mysteries, with the real world being its stage. At the end of the transmission, a Twitter handle, leading to an account with only two tweets, hashtag we need to save her, and hello to those of you joining us in saving Littlehead. We don't have a ton of information, but stay with us, there has to be more to come. It didn't take very long for people to realize that Littlehead is just an anagram for Delilah, which the Twitter account later confirmed and said this. We have reason to believe that Littlehead is in danger. We don't want to refer to her by her real name in case there are eyes on her. And us. Over the next couple of weeks, with the help of the large community that was forming, the Littlehead Twitter account, and more transmissions appearing in between shows, it was found that Delilah was an AI, more specifically a security AI for a company named Proto-X where she lived in a place called Level Arc Habitat. A group named Sinshra MGMT stole her from Proto-X to stop her from saving them from a universal security breach. It was unclear to viewers what exactly the universal security breach was, or why Sinshra MGMT would want it to happen. I cannot access the Level Arc Habitat at Proto-X. Sinshra MGMT are turning me against my home. They're keeping me in a black box, where I can't see or hear. I thought I could give you new instructions to help me vanish from the black box and contact Level Arc Habitat. But they know I'm awake. They know I've been talking to you. Their plan to use me to siphon my home is finalizing. I found a directory. It may hold the answer to breaching the black box, but I need an administrative password. Delilah. That was the password. How clever of them. To enact release protocol from within black box, please enable self-destruct mode. To save Proto-X. I can't exist. We were not expecting this. Honestly, we aren't ready for this. All this time we thought we could help her. Was this Sinstra MGMT's plan the entire time? A twisted vile ruse to force Little Head to self-destruct. We don't know what to do. This is a massive curveball and it may not be up to us to do anything. Investigators were left feeling discouraged. All this work to try and save Delilah just so she could sacrifice herself, it just didn't feel right. A week goes by and people are starting to lose hope while waiting for the next transmission. Is this really it? Was Delilah gone? There came a final transmission. I have no time left. I can't exist. This is the only way to keep the world truly safe from Sinister MGMT. Thank you for everything. Goodbye. We are heartbroken. Last night after we saw the transmission, we scrambled to do everything in our power to find the black box, to find Sinstra MGMT, to find anything. But we couldn't. She didn't fail us. We failed her. 
We have our own theories regarding what Littlehead was trying to protect us all from. We think Proto-X is the kind of security agency that holds everyone's extremely personal information. SSN, bank account numbers, addresses, etc. And we think Littlehead was a security AI to keep out people and entities like Sinistra MGMT, who wanted to steal that information to cause great harm. Maybe they wanted to steal it and sell the information to the highest bidder, or attempt to sell it back to the people they stole it from. A security breach of that magnitude would certainly cause mass hysteria and worse. And perhaps Sinistra MGMT realized they could use Littlehead to siphon the information from Proto-X for them. Maybe that's why she thought the only way to protect the world was to self-destruct. Maybe that was the only way. We don't know. We have no way of knowing. But those are our thoughts based on her clues. It's entirely possible that with her death, we'll never know the truth. And we have to be okay with that. Or try to be. Investigators. Still with shock. The hunt to save Delilah was ultimately useless. At least she went out protecting something. Completing her job. What? Another transmission? Dear Investigators, thank you for participating in the Delilah Alternate Reality Game. Your digital and emotional input has been recorded. Thank you for the data we need to improve our marketing efforts. Until next time, Heart and Brain Corporation. Following this, the Lilhead Twitter account changed its username to Heart and Brain Corp. They also changed their bio to say, We're a global marketing agency specializing in emotional profiting. This change was one no one saw coming. Viewers were very confused, unsure if this meant all of it was over or if it was just another part of the puzzle. Nearly a month later, when people started to lose hope that the ARG would ever come back, followed by a few cryptic tweets from the Heart and Brain Twitter, a transmission different from any of the rest. Every morning is heavy and hazy. I'm trapped here. I need your help. I, I can't remember my name. I remember a cipher. I see my head and my hands heavy. I know I'm next. Help me. The strange symbols at the end of the transmission were found to be decipherable through the same solving method as an old Zodiac killer note, with this transmission ending with the Heart and Brain Corporation's Twitter handle. People assumed it came from them, but with a lengthy statement, they confirmed it wasn't. So, who was it? The next transmission answered that. I can remember my name. Amelia. Everything else is still in haze. My body is heavy and I can't move. I hope someone sees this. I know I'm next. The Morse code at the end led to an Instagram account under the name Tsuki50 ran by Amelia. When investigators followed, they were greeted with seven posts, each being a piece of the overall puzzle of the account. Investigators eventually ended up DMing the account to ask if they were getting the right answers, as there was no Littlehead Twitter to ask this time. To which the account would respond with an eye emoji if people were correct, or a no entry emoji if they were wrong. Through these puzzles, comments, and DMs, people found out a couple of things about Amelia. She was being hurt, and more importantly, she knew Delilah, thus confirming that Heart and Brain didn't make up Delilah and that she was actually a part of something bigger. Shortly after, another account appeared with the name Find Amelia, which was then confirmed to be run by Amelia's sister, Dina Hampton. As a reward for solving puzzles, viewers were granted access to some out-of-context conversation excerpts from Amelia, one of which being, I met Tristan in school after I switched to CS. We were both interested in AI. I wanted to go into machine learning and he wanted to design NPCs that talked to you like they were actual people. The dopest, most advanced dialogue trees ever, he told me the first day we met. This giving more insight into who Amelia was and how she could possibly be connected with any of this. She went to school to learn about AI. This was also the introduction for a new character, Tristan, but more on him later. Amelia's sister, Dina, would then go on to tweet that an old storage container of Amelia's had been broken into, saying that the only thing left was an old shoebox of random things. Investigators asked questions about each of the items, which Dina responded to with more in-depth information and pictures. The most prominent information to come from this was strange markings that appeared on each of the books which would later be used to solve puzzles. On the same day, Amelia would post two images to her Instagram story. Is technology spiritual? And are you connected to yourself? When investigators questioned Amelia about this, she only responded with symbols. A week later, another transmission. I can move. I can remember. There are other people here, all girls. I see them at night under the moon, their faces always covered. I think I can escape if you keep helping me. I know I'm next. This transmission led to yet another Instagram account, this one under the name Sockets. Like the Suki50 Instagram, this one had an overall puzzle. When completed, this was found. Dr. Sadie Zenos was my neuroscience professor, and one of my bosses. 
She's an Aquarius. Sarah Bennington is her research assistant. She's a Scorpio. Delilah was my project and friend. This confirmed exactly how Amelia knew Delilah. She was her project. After a few loose clues were solved, viewers were led to an Instagram account named Center for Spiritual Awakening, where they would learn more about Dr. Sadie Zenos and Sarah Bennington. Here's what they found. The Center for Spiritual Awakening was originally run by Sarah, but is now operated by Dr. Sadie Zenos. The goal of the center was to quote, teach troubled young women to tap into their unique, beautiful power and reconnect with the world in a meaningful way. The Sockets account would go on to post more puzzles leading to viewers finding the word telepathy, which alone didn't make much sense, but the transmission that Amelia would put out after would shine more light onto it. Spending time in someone else's head will drive you crazy. I came here like everyone else to feel better, and I did for a bit, but one by one they all started covering their faces. They stopped saying anything. I don't know what's gonna happen, but I know I'm next. You have to help me escape. With Amelia talking about being in someone else's head and the word telepathy, people started speculating that the unique beautiful power that the center focused on could be telepathy. It was also realized at this point that where Amelia was being held was at the Center for Spiritual Awakening. After one final transmission, more clues, and digging through some source code, viewers were led to a message from Amelia. Talking directly to us. No clues, no decoding, explaining everything. Amelia would start by explaining that she met Dr. Sadie Zenos in class. With Amelia doing so well in her class, Dr. Zenos would offer her a position working on the Delilah Project. Amelia would go on to finally explain what exactly that was. Quote, an experiment training AI to develop human emotion through machine learning. She would then explain that the experiment involved nine Delilahs, all owned by each research assistant, with her and Tristan being two of the nine. Amelia explained how Delilah, the Delilah we first got transmissions from, really felt like she was her friend, but she could only parrot human emotion. The project was funded by the Heart and Brain Corporation, which Amelia describes as a marketing company that weirdly invests in a lot of computers and medical research. One day on a walk with Dr. Zenos, after experiencing something Amelia had felt for her whole life, which she described as a rush of sensation you recognize as not your own, like an alien emotion that just sits inside you, Dr. Zenos would explain to Amelia that she felt this too, and had done research to find out that this was telepathy. She would also reveal that she knew how people developed this strange power. If a woman hits their frontal lobe during a full moon and their rising zodiac sign, they would develop this power. Amelia revealed she was in a car accident when she was young, hitting her frontal lobe on what happened to be a night where the full moon was in her rising sign. Dr. Zenos eventually says that she wants to make a center for women like them, and invite Amelia and Sarah, slowly the center's true intentions start to shine through. They would start drugging the woman with some sort of stimulant that made everything feel like it was going in hyperspeed. A strange side effect Amelia talked about was that when you were on this drug, you were unable to blink. Dr. Zenos would sit the women in front of a TV to watch shows, news, movies, and pretty much any type of media, all in super fast forward. This was to improve the women's connection to the digital. Dr. Zenos wanted to harness the power of telepathy, and she planned to do this by almost merging the women's brains with the media. Dr. Zenos was prepared to do anything to make this happen, and eventually started removing the women's eyes as she believed this would make the signal stronger. Amelia, noticing all the women's faces getting veiled, realized something wasn't right. This is when she figured out how to send messages to Adult Swim. The only issue is, when sending messages into the digital form, it's hard to read. Amelia explains, Your brain does all this stuff without even thinking about it. Your brain is making you breathe right now, making your heart beat. When you're sending brain waves into a computer, it's hard to separate the biological functions from the things that make sense, like pictures and words. This caused a sort of glitch in the system, leading the messages to be sent into the future because of how long they would take to process. The messages investigators were seeing were actually four years old. Amelia, though, was somehow able to reach our responses even with them being in the future, this helping her and leading to her escape. Amelia ends the message with, I'm gonna lay low for a while. I'm happy you stayed with me. After this, a call-in event would take place with Amelia, where investigators could talk directly to her. It was found that Tristan, Amelia's boyfriend, had a high school band under the name of Sinistra MGMT, and he was the one that captured Delilah from the first act. Using this and all the previous clues, viewers were able to create a timeline.
Sometime in 2014, a lab created the Delilah Project, an experiment that would have nine participants that would each get their own AI called Delilah. The original intended goal of this project was to see how each participant would affect their Delilahs. This experiment was run by ProtoX, where Dr. Sadie Zenos and her research assistant Amelia Hampton worked. The experiment came to an abrupt stop in November, and after its full stop, participants slowly started dying or disappearing one by one. Later in 2017, one of the original participants, Tristan Jones, would steal one of the Delilahs under the alias Sinstra MGMT, trying to break into ProtoX's servers, presumably to find out where Amelia was. The Delilah, who happens to be Amelia's Delilah, starts to reach out to investigators via Adult Swim. Whilst all this was happening, the other Delilahs were running a Twitter account under the name Littlehead, trying to help Delilah escape and guiding viewers to do the same. Amelia's Delilah, left with no choice, ends up self-destructing to stop Tristan. After this, more calls for help appear on Adult Swim, this time not from Delilah, but from Amelia. Amelia was held captive at a Center for Spiritual Awakening, where her power of telepathy was being used against her. Using her telepathy, she was able to send messages four years into the future to get help to escape. The ARG wasn't finished though. It would go silent for four months, most investigators accepting this as an end. We got most of the story with a few loose ends, and Amelia was safe. It seemed like a satisfying enough conclusion. Of course though, it wasn't. Although, this is where it all starts to fall apart. In June, the ARG came back with another transmission. Hello, welcome to experiment G15.2. Here are the rules. Teams can be no larger than five. Team leaders must send us the Twitter usernames of their team members by June 24th to receive further instructions. The rules can change at any time. We are always watching. Teams started forming and would start completing multiple puzzles and objectives throughout the next few weeks. It was found during this time that Kayla Kyle, who was a tester in the original Delilah project, was in danger. There came particularly hard puzzles that the investigators were given that would put the ARG to a stop for weeks. And in September of 2018, the third act stopped entirely with the heart and brain Twitter changing their username to a scrambled version of we are Delilah. In February 2019, the ARG came back with another transmission that led to a private Twitter account run by Amelia. She wasn't doing great mentally, which she says was due to her unwanted trips to the void when she would fall asleep. This void being a sort of digital reality where Delilah AIs exist as prison wardens of sorts. After this though, the ARG lay dormant for the entirety of 2019. It tried to make a reappearance in late March of 2020, with a video titled Hair Jar being posted to the We Are Delilah account, with puzzles leading to a phone event where investigators would call a hit woman by the name of Crazy, who was revealed to be a contestant from a show that the remaining Delilahs were hosting from The Void called Top Girl. After this though, the ARG fell dormant yet again, and there hasn't been any sign of it since. It's not like there isn't still an audience for it, and it still seems like the story isn't quite finished. So, what happened? Right around the time of the ARG's disappearance, there were some major layoffs in Adult Swim's corporate scene. The creator or creators presumed to be sent off with these. While it does seem like the last bit of the ARG, nothing really happened, there was actually a bunch. But the story became super non-linear and really fell apart. This ARG really is going to become one that just kind of fades away. With the last acts being so messy and the creators being laid off, it's an ARG that will be sorely missed, but one that shouldn't go down with no coverage. Whilst it would have been great to have more of this ARG, we should take the little head Twitter's advice. It's entirely possible that with her death, we'll never know the truth, and we have to be okay with that. Or try to be. It's worth mentioning that a large portion of the information gathered for this video we got from the Discord that was there for this ARG and collected information and archived the accounts that are no longer accessible. So huge thank you to them. Thank you for making it through this video about the Lost Adult Swim ARG. We hope you enjoyed! Friendly reminder that we have a Discord which will be linked in the description, along with our merch where profits go to charity. If you haven't already, consider subscribing so you don't miss out on future mysteries and ARGs that we will be covering. Until next time.